John Drayton purchased this property in 1738. I think he started constructing sometime soon thereafter, and they're probably moving into the house at the end of the 1740s, maybe early 1750s. This house is older than the United States of America. When John purchased this property and started building, George Washington was six years old. Thomas Jefferson wasn't born yet. That is awesome. That is, that's cool to think about. Yeah. Um, do we know much about John Drayton? John Drayton is really a man of mystery. We do not have many records that survive from his life. We know he was born around 1715, died in 1779 fleeing the British. And in those intervening years, he amassed an empire that reached about 76,000 acres all over South Carolina and Georgia. And so this property, Drayton Hall, is really just the center of that plantation empire that he built. This house was constructed in the 1730s, 1740s, and then the family did very little to it in the intervening generations. And so the National Trust has decided to treat the house like an artifact, which means we don't try to restore it to a particular time period. We do work very hard to conserve all the original craftsmanship. So all of the hand-carved moldings are still there, handmade bricks, all of these things we are trying to protect. So when people come here, what they are looking at is the real artifact. This room in the 19th century was the dining room of Drayton Hall. So when this house was first built, we actually don't know what they were using the rooms for, and it was really common for them to use each room for several different functions. But in the 19th century, Charles Drayton actually drew a floor plan of his house and he labeled some of the rooms and he labeled this as the dining room. And this really makes sense for us because in this room you can actually see the spiral staircase that led down to the cellar where enslaved people prepared all the meals for the household and then they would come up this staircase and directly into this room where they could serve meals. The staircase continues all the way up to the attic today. This is how I get into the attic if I need to go up there and do anything. Um, and so I can say from experience, these stairs are small. They're very narrow, it's dark. Um, and so sometimes I imagine, what if I was carrying a plate of food or somebody's laundry or a full chamber pot up and down these stairs. So this is really part of the working heart of this house where enslaved people were moving through the house behind closed doors, but keeping the place going. This room also features a really kind of unusual open doorway. So there's this door here, but then there's this other one that's bricked up. We get a lot of questions about this. Um, this is an original load-bearing brick wall. This has been a door to nowhere forever. So they actually just built this for symmetry. They had a real door over here. They built a fake door on the other side. So you couldn't see the brick. They put a door in front of it, but it didn't go anywhere. And then it was removed. We think the Drayton family took it out so that they could just put a shelf here. Um, but because it's gone, you can see some really strange things. So there's this decorative brickwork right here. We call this a diaper pattern. There's no reason for this to be here. It was totally hidden. So we think the mason was just practicing. He was trying uh, a new skill in a place where you could mess up and it doesn't matter. So you can see fingerprints in this brick. There's three fingerprints in here. And so this survives in this brick because they were all handmade. So someone was forming the clay here and tempering it, and then they would put this clay into molds. And after it came out of a mold, someone had to stack all of these soft bricks to dry before they could be fired in a kiln. And so in that process of stacking those bricks, they're still soft enough that you could leave fingerprints in them. These fingerprints were probably made by an enslaved child. Um, they were often the ones tasked with stacking these bricks. And so you can come to Drayton Hall and look very closely at all the bricks and find lots of examples of where people have literally left their mark on the building and it survives three centuries later. That's cool, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. This room has an original hand-carved plaster ceiling. So this plaster ceiling was created by someone laying on their back on scaffolding, carving this design out of wet plaster. And it survived from the 1740s with almost no intervention from us. 
So we're still studying the design of this ceiling. We're learning lots of things in this room. One of the mysteries that we're still trying to work out actually has to do with some strange carvings in between some of our windows over here. So if you look right here, see those carvings there? So there's carvings on that side and on the opposite side of this pier. So the space between the windows is called a pier. There would have been a mirror hanging here. They probably ordered it from London and waited months and months for it to arrive. And then when it got here, it didn't fit. So they made it fit. <laughs> so this just makes me laugh when I see it because it reminds me that people had really similar problems mm -hmm. then as they do today. You ordered your mirror, you're really excited about it, it doesn't fit, so you make it work. And that's exactly what's happening here. So we haven't seen this mirror, it doesn't survive that we know of, mm -hmm. but we can trace these carvings and actually try to rebuild it based on these carvings so we can so have an idea what it looked like than to, to accommodate, accommodate for the mirror exactly wow yeah so that kind of tells us more or less what the shape of it was Wow. because cool. they had to jam it in there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's really neat There is a Drayton family growth chart that survives in the house. So the oldest entry we can find on here is from the 1880s. And it has been in continuous use since then. So you will see marks on here from recent years. The Drayton family still comes out to measure little family members on here. So April 8th, 1915, Miss Charlotta Drayton measured her dog Nipper and put Nipper on the growth chart. We have photos of Nipper. He was not a Great Dane. He was a Bull Terrier. So Nipper cheated. <laughs> and we actually had the opportunity to talk to Miss Charlotta's nephew, Charlie Drayton, about Nipper the dog. And I asked him, um, if Nipper was a biter, if that's how he got his name. And he was like, no, he, he was a nice dog. <laughs> he doesn't know why she named him Nipper, but here you go. He's yeah. memorialized in the growth chart here. <laughs> in the upper great hall right now and you can see that it's a big empty space we don't have any furniture in here and that's because the furniture in our collection is very old very well made we want to take great care of it um, but this house is unconditioned there's no heat there's no air conditioning it's not a great place to take really good care of furniture like that so you can see the Drayton furniture in our gallery on site just not in the house This blue-green paint that you see on the walls dates to 1870 or 1880, so it's post-Civil War. Um, and we've actually done a ton of work to conserve it and keep it on the walls. So what we actually did was we borrowed a technique from the fine art conservation world. So we sprayed a solution onto the walls and then we took sheets of mylar and went foot by foot and pressed all of the paint into the wall. So it's totally invisible, doesn't have any sheen or anything, but it helps hold that original paint in place. And that's what a lot of our preservation work looks like here. We don't want you to notice all the things that we're doing to hold the line, basically, and keep everything as it was as much as possible. So it looks a little shabby, but it's the real deal. It's original, and we really like that about it. That's, that's cool. Do yeah. we know what kind of wood yeah, they used a lot of different kinds of wood in the house. So the paneling is cypress, there's tulip poplar framing, there's oak, there's longleaf yellow pine. They used all kinds of different materials. They also imported stone from England. All the columns are Portland limestone. Um, glass probably all came from England. Um, so they, they were bringing a lot of materials from all over the place. We 
are often doing archaeology on the property as well. We have two full-time archaeologists on staff and they are currently doing an excavation inside of the main house. We've got another excavation happening just outside of the house and so if you come while they're working they're happy to show you what's coming out of the ground. And what are some of those those things y'all kind of y'all discovered? Some of the artifacts that we've seen recently include a megalodon tooth and um, ceramics. We've got pieces of the house like tiles that line the fireboxes, massive glass bottles that may have held gin or wine. Um, so there's all kinds of very different things coming out of the ground. So Drayton Hall has a website that people can visit. You can purchase tickets online. We're open six days a week and you can also engage with us on social media. We often share content on our Facebook and Instagram pages. We'll occasionally do a YouTube video, and we've been known to do live videos where people can tell me where they wanna go in the house, and we'll look at whatever you wanna look at in real time. Awesome. Yeah.